Hey, Alex, I heard you have a question for me. So on his channel, yeah, he's applying science to ordinary foods in ways that he's trying to improve it. Hey Neil, what's up? My name is Alex. I'm a YouTuber and I make videos about uh, food, but from the DIY and uh, science point of view. So my last video was about pan seasoning. Uh, you know, uh, the most common and historical method to season a pan is to burn fat inside it in order to create a dry, hard and kind of non-stick surface. So allegedly, oil polymerization is responsible for that. Now, I am wondering why does that uh, coating stick to the material, to the metal, in my case, carbon steel or, or even cast iron? And, and I'm also wondering, uh, how could we make that bond stronger? Uh, also, I know my question is chemistry related uh, and that you are an astrophysicist. So just imagine that you're seasoning in space. Thank you. That's pretty funny. Wow. Seasoning in space. Just the way he speaks, I want him to be my chef. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> the food will be better right. no matter what he's it, making. No, exactly. It's right. cornflakes, it's going to be French cornflakes. <laughs> he can't cook at all. It's just like he just tells you it's good, and you're like, this is delicious. <laughs> By the way, you lick this. Mm, oh, the my God. accent makes, it, it, right, it, makes just, it all better. Exactly. <laughs> I have seasoned this with my words. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's the American mentality uh, manifested there. So first of all, the oil that makes the surface of the pan nonstick, which, by the way, is the secret of well-seasoned woks, mm. okay? Mm. A good iron wok has, oil has been on there multiple times. So the oil is now the surface of the pan, and it's smooth because the pan itself, the metallic surface is structured. Okay, so you put in oil, and oil will fill all the nooks and crannies and make a smooth surface, and then you burn it there. Okay, so then it just solidifies the part that got burned. The got polymerization mm -hmm. is what he's talking about. Right. right? My, what my point is, beyond that, it's stuck because it's burned onto the pan. You can remove it with a Brillo pad or with, with heavy soap. Right. You can remove it. It's not permanently affixed the way Teflon is sort of permanently attached, mm -hmm. basically. Right. You know, you can take a belt sander and remove it, but otherwise, the Teflon is on. So it's not permanently attached. It's there, and you have to be careful to not remove it when it's time to wash it. So, so no, it's not permanently attached. Why it's non-stick, that's a really, really smooth surface at that point. And not all smooth surfaces are non-stick. So I don't have a good <laughs> answer for that. Oh, okay. So I'll plead ignorance on this but what i did see recently is the frontier of nonstick surfaces they're putting it on the inside of a ketchup bottle that makes sense so you tip the ketchup and it just slides, and it slides out. out they put you tip the mayonnaise bottle and it, the mayonnaise just slides out okay that sounds nasty that, that sounds wrong yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't want mayonnaise coming That's, to I you i don't want mayonnaise sliding my way <laughs> i don't want any mayonnaise you, you sliding my way you want to go in way. and get the mayonnaise yes exactly you don't want the mayonnaise chasing if you down I the street i want to manually <laughs> mine my own mayonnaise <laughs> <laughs> so the frontier of nonstick surfaces when introduced to food means there's much less food waste. Right. We trying to get the last of the peanut butter in the jar, the last of the mayonnaise, right. the last of everything else. So at home we have a, have a whole set of tools of of um what do you call the little the, the rubber, spatula, little yeah. rubber. I use rubber them too. Center. I get every little. They're basically drop. squeegees. That's what they are. And, mm -hmm. Yep. Get it. Get it all. You know. And I cut the cut it open. You too. know nature's first squeegee. What the tongue. There you go. <laughs> Right? <laughs> That's what I do. I, I, tr I try not to do it in a restaurant, but at right. home, I'm licking the plate. If the sauce was good, I'm licking the plate. My sister told me that I that's, in France, supposedly the highest compliment you can pay, no, pay, is that right? pay a chef. It's if you take the plate and you, I mean, you don't really, ah, but it's basically, tactfully. it's tactfully one time and just like that's compliments to the chef. Like wow. that's how good it was. That's like in some other parts, if you burp, that's a good right, thing. Exactly. Okay. Right, exactly. Like, uh, right, and that's, that's my Uncle Jim's house. <laughs> If you burp, it's compliments to the chef. You don't have an Uncle and Jim. And by the way, you this don't have an Uncle Jim. By the way, this is great beer. <laughs> so, so I only got to half your answer there, but that's the best I can do as an astrophysicist. Not, it's not so much chemist, but material scientist. They're the ones who think about the surfaces of of, of solid objects right. and how they interact. So, you know what he does? Yeah, he brings the methods and tools of science to food.
Nice. Now, he's not the first to do that, but he does it in a very fun and interesting way. And you see all his failures, and you and, and you look at the process, and you look at the thoughts that went that went into it. So I just think that's great because the kitchen is the first and last bastion of science in the household. Nice. Got the chemistry. That's right. Of the of the food that you add together. It's got the physics, physics. of the heat that's and the right. thing. It's got the biology because you're cooking something that was once alive. That's right. No matter if it was a plant or not. Correct. Which is why when I cut my carrots, I hear them go, ah! <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> that's your carrots. My celery does that. <laughs> they must be from the same garden. 